All right. Hello, everyone. Um, this is Alyssa Thompson. I teach third grade at Fort Mill Elementary School, and I just wanted to take some time today to talk to you parents, guardians, and caregivers about something that's very popular in education um, during this time, and it's called differentiation. I just wanted to take some time to explain it in detail um, to give you an idea of what you might be seeing in your child's classroom and really what you should be seeing in your child's classroom and just to kind of educate you on the reason your child's teacher might be doing certain strategies or you might see certain types of activities and um, work tasks coming home for your students as well. Um, I think understanding what differentiation is will help provide a clearer picture for the instructional decisions that your child's teacher is having. So without further ado, um, what is differentiation? So differentiation refers to um, using different types of instructional techniques um, to, that best fit your child. So a teacher wouldn't want to use an equality model, they want to use an equity model just like you see in the cartoon in front of you. Um, if a teacher used the same instructional technique for all child for all the children in in her class or his or her class, um, you would see an equality model where um, it's a one size fits all. But instead, what differentiation does is it comes from an equity model of education where a teacher might use a certain technique um, with one student and then might use a more intensive different technique with another student. But it's all about making sure that all the students can see over the fence, um, no matter what kind of challenges they might have for, for coming into the classroom um, or what um, gifts and assets they already have. So the teacher evaluates those things and creates an equitable classroom versus an equal classroom. And that's the key part, the key heart of differentiation. Um, so what does differentiation do for your child? Well, differentiation, yes, it creates an equitable classroom. Um, the teacher is going to use techniques and instruction practices to meet the needs of all the children in the class. Um, it's going to give the student an opportunity to have a mini learning environment. Um, you can see in the picture there a teacher is using a small group environment with one technique for that group of children. Um, it allows them to have, during those mini learning environments, time to talk and have discourse with their peers. Usually during that mini learning environment time, they're going to be with students who are around the same level as them, depending on the flexible grouping, and the, um, which means the grouping that can move a lot um, and change a lot. It really depends on how the teacher decides to group the children, but usually during that small group time, they are what we call homogenous, which means they're, the, the students are all on the same level. Um, and it allows them to have that conversation because we know through the research that conversation and discourse is something that really can um, create learning and, and allow it to, um, to grow in um, that environment. But also, the, through differentiation, students can be challenged, supported, and be those challengers and supporters for their peers. Um, so when the students aren't meeting in the mini learning environment with their teacher, they're able to be doing independent learning tasks or collaborative learning tasks with their friends um, and their peers out in the classroom. So that's time away from the teacher that is super valuable as well, um, where students or sometimes, depending on how the teacher groups them, um, with other peers who may be on differing levels, who might be a higher level than them or a lower level than them. And that gives them an opportunity um, to grow as a leader, to grow as someone who might look to someone else for help um, in a respectful way. And so that can really foster collaboration um, for your student. Um, differentiation creates overall a classroom where everybody's learning style, everyone's interests are taken into account, and a teacher can really plan the best instruction possible for your child um, <clears throat> when they're coming from a place of differentiation. Um, depending on pre-assessment data, so data that was taken from the children in the class um, before any learning or any kind of technique was used with the children, the teacher can use that pre-assessment or the pre-test data to really group your, your child into the best possible group that, so that the teacher can um, account for what they already know and know where they need to help the student to push them forward. 
Um, so in reading specifically, this is going to give your teacher an, an opportunity to engage your student in things that interest them through um, books and materials that are interesting and engaging to your child. Um, it's also going to give them an opportunity um, to give your child time to talk to other um, friends and peers and partners about books. Um, it's going to give them an opportunity to independently practice um, what they're learning, the strategies that their teachers have given them. Um, on their own. It's going to give them all these opportunities that a whole group or um, a big group instruction technique might not give them. Again, it's going back to we don't want this instruction to be a one-size-fits-all. We want everyone um, to be able to be reached on their level in um, a way that makes most sense um, and meets the needs of each individual child. But differentiation creates a classroom where that is possible because we want every child to have an opportunity to have an individualized reading experience. Um, we want to cultivate readers who are excited on an individual level about books and who are excited to come to reading block every day. So there are a couple of ways that you're going to see your teacher, your child's teacher, differentiate. Um, there's three main ways. So the first way the teacher can differentiate or um, create an individual learning experience for your child is through the content or what the kids are learning. Um, so the teacher may choose um, to set up the way that the content is presented or the order that the content is presented in. Um, according to the needs of her students or his or her students. Um, that's usually done through those pre-tests that we talked about earlier. Um, and through this, the teacher can create activities um, and techniques that best fit what those students need. Um, they can also enrich the curriculum if students have already mastered certain things. Um, but we never want to accelerate students. We always want to equip them and enrich them in what they're already learning because accelerating does them a disservice um, when they really could enrich their um, current understanding of what's going on in the classroom. We don't want to move them too fast to where they're missing small details. Um, then also it gives the teacher an opportunity to develop, be developmentally appropriate for students who are below um, the benchmark, but at the same time filling in those gaps and helping the students um, to reach the grade level goals and benchmarks, um, but still making it on grade level appropriate for where that student should be because even if a student is below benchmark, we still want them to be learning what they should be at their current grade level. Um, it also provides um, students a choice, and this is so powerful. When students can choose the way that they learn um, or the way that they complete an activity, it gives them the power and engages them in a specific way, makes them excited about what they're doing. Um, and it also, again, creates that opportunity where students um, can be matched with perfect content that matches their exact level. So content is one of the ways. The next way is through the process. So teachers might change how the students are being presented with material. They may change um, how the students are working with the material so that the activities might change. Um, the wording might change from the teacher. The tools that the teacher is using to teach might change. There might be different charts and things that they are shown. The students are shown um, that help them at their specific individualized level. Um, it's going to reflect the student learning style and maybe even their preference in reading. If a teacher knows that a student is passionate about dogs, they might try to involve dogs in their technique to engage your specific student in the best way possible. Um, and it's going to vary the learning process depending on how your student learns in reading. If a student already comes in with with huge gains in comprehension, then the teacher might focus more on fluency. So that process is going to change depending on where your child is individually. The third way that teachers can differentiate is through product, so the end result of the student learning. So we're used to seeing tangible um, ways for students to express what they've learned, and that's usually through tests. Um, but there's other ways um, and what we call performance tasks or things that students can complete to show their learning. You may see them do a report. You might see a student make a brochure. You might see a student um, give a speech. They might do a skit. There might be some task for them to complete. But differentiation allows your teacher, your child's teacher, to create an opportunity for your student to complete any kind of product 
um, to display their learning because not all students are test takers and teachers can know that about your kids um, and they can create assessments that truly reflect how your student is learning um, in ways more than a test. So I really like that. Um, and it gives them um, ch opportunities to challenge students, provide variety and choice all in the reading block, which is so crucial to creating good, well-rounded readers. And then, so how will your teachers decide this? How will your child's teacher really decide on all of this? Well, they're focused on three things. Um, the teachers are given English language arts standards by the state of South Carolina. The, those standards outline what each um, unit your, your student is learning should be comprised of academically. So they should be learning this, this, and this within this unit. And standards tell the teachers exactly what to teach. Um, but each standard can be unpacked through the know, understand, do strategy. And it helps the teachers to prepare for differentiation in their class. Um, the teacher will decide what your student needs to know first then how, what they need to understand to be able to do the standard, and then what they need to be able to do for that product at the end of that at the end of learning that standard. Um, so this is really helpful in teachers making instructional decisions. Let's look at an example. So one of the examples that I have here is a third grade reading standard in literary text, which means fiction, um, and it has to do with comprehension, understanding the story, so it's meaning and context. Standard six, and this standard says in red. Summarize key details and ideas to support analysis of thematic development. <clears throat> Basically, this, this standard is focused on summarizing. Um, so here I've outlined the know, the understand, and the do, just like your child's teacher would. The know is they have to know the vocabulary, to know what a summary is used for, how long a summary usually is. That background information is that know piece. The understanding is the they may need to understand the difference between a main idea and a detail in a story. Um, and how that fits inside of a summary. The importance of a summary and comprehension, so knowing that they can summarize to check for understanding of the story. And then, of course, to do, they have to be able to write a summary. They have to be able to use relevant, important details, um, and they have to be able to identify those details from the text. So just by doing that, your child's teacher, just by doing that know, understand, do, is going to be able to differentiate and create different teaching techniques to best help your child understand that one specific standard on how to summarize um, while reading fiction text. Um, so that know, understand, do strategy really helps um, your child's teacher differentiate and begin to do this. So there's other um, strategies teachers may use. I just want to cover a couple of them that um, helps them differentiate and meet all the needs of all the students in their class. Um, one of those is tic-tac-toe assignments. So it would be more like a, a checkerboard, um, a tic-tac-toe board, where students have to complete three in a row of any kind, and each each block is going to be an activity. Those activities might range in product. They might range in process. And they might range in content, but the big idea here is that students could complete three in a row of any of their choice, um, and it's going to let them complete the activity on their level. And where they are menu activities, where they have like an appetizer, a main meal, and a dessert, and they have to pick certain activities from lists, and each student's product may look different, um, and so that helps to individualize. Cuban, cubing activities. Cubing activities are more um, in what we call our disciplinary studies, so in science and social studies, where we can pull in reading skills um, into those studies and, and create environments where students are practicing skills like compare and contrast. But basically, um, they're building up their understanding from the, from the very bottom. Um, and they, they move from basic to complex throughout the activity. Um, and it's really creating a pace um, and how fast they're moving that's special to that one group because we don't want an equal one-size-fits-all class. We want a classroom where all students can be successful. They also could complete activities that are Socratic seminar. So this is a grand discussion, so a big classroom discussion or a small group discussion, usually focused on one literary text. Um, one book or passage that's decided on by the teacher. But again, that's all um, moldable to what your child needs. Um, and then again, through technology programs. So we at our school have a program called Odyssey where students can log in. And those activities that those students are practicing are reading activities 
that are based off of their um, standardized testing score and it um, targets activities where they need support. Um, so no one child is completing the same activities. They're all completing different activities in areas of, of reading that they need help um, and need support on. And it also helps me to see and track how those students are doing um, as they're completing those technologies. So technology can be our friend in helping teachers to differentiate um, for students. Um, so these are the references um, and the research that was used to comprise this um, conversation and, and this presentation. I hope you enjoyed and hope this kind of helped you as a parent to understand or a caregiver or a guardian to understand a little bit more about differentiation and how your child's teacher will be using it in the classroom. Thank you for your time.